Flight Day 9 of the Flight of Space Shuttle Discovery was a day that saw most of the activity take place inside the newest pressurized module of the International Space Station, the Permanent Multipurpose Module, which was installed on the underside of the Unity node earlier this week. The module that's uh, approximately the size of the uh, European Columbus Laboratory came with more than three tons of materials packed inside that has to be unpacked. And part of the reason that extra days were added to Discovery's docked time at the International Space Station was to provide the six shuttle crew members two more days so that material could be unpacked and distributed around the space station to the locations where it's destined to go and so that the shuttle crew members could assist their station colleagues in outfitting the PMM, in getting the racks reconfigured into the configuration that they need to be in for long-term life on orbit. Ooh, B. Alvin Drew, hey. coming out of the newest, and as we know right now, final U.S. module to be attached to the International Space Station. What's going on in down in there today, Al? We're installing brackets. Brackets? Brackets. Brackets for racks. All right, because yes. there's a lot of racks down in there, aren't there? A lot of racks, a lot of rack spaces down there. And so this is a nice big new closet, yes. kind of storage area. Yep. All right, and we're going to uh, move things from the station in here and take some stuff back. Um, and I'll just take you in and show you. Nice music playing. It's a nice big space. And back in the corner, there he is, Steve Bowen, working hard on a bracket. He's going to have to say a few words to us. Do it. It's just like a Saturday afternoon in the garage. All right. Thank you, Steve. Except I had the right tools at home. Oh. <laughs> Take all my fantasies and send it The lovely Katie Coleman entering the PMM. <laughs> With tools. Ooh, maybe it's the right tools. Well, we're trying. Doing and Melfi. the Melfi to Glacier transfer of samples. It's cold. Very cold. And uh, it's got some ice packs. We're going to put these in this little bag here. And then we're going to collect some samples and move them out of uh, Melfi, the big freezer on the space station, and over to the little freezer that we just moved onto the space shuttle to bring home. Okay, back at Melfi. Here's one of the cool things at Melfi. Very refreshing. A little frost. Like a cool mountain stream. We're back in the PMM. Yes. There's action going on in here. There's so much action. Look, every corner, every corner you go to, there is somebody working on a rack. This is Al again. Al? I'm not doing anything. He's not doing anything. I just finished that bracket over there. Okay. Yeah. Move along. Steve? Look, he's still in that same corner where we left him the last time. It's a beautiful thing. He finds ways to occupy himself. I'm not doing anything. All Just right. don't tell anybody. Misha. Misha. Unbelievable. Misha. Minutes and minutes and I've almost got one out of six. Please. Okay. All right. We're in the lab again. And one of the questions we're getting a lot is where is Robinot? Well, Robinot is in here. This is his packing box. We've moved it from the uh, PMM, which was the new module that we brought up, where he was for... He, it was stowed for, oh, I don't know, at least four months back at Kennedy Space Center while waiting for launch. So I'm sure that Robonaut is anxious to get out of this box, either today or tomorrow, or tomorrow or the next day. One of these days, Robonaut will be set free. For Commander Lindsay, what do you do for fun in microgravity, and do you have any special tricks you like to do? Yeah, we call those stupid astronaut tricks, and... Uh, <laughs> I have several that I'm not very good at, but uh, and I have the bruises to show for it. But uh, Flight Day 9 also saw several of the crew members take time for an educational event with uh, students at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. And late in the crew's morning, all 12 crew members, shuttle and station crew members alike, gathered together for a joint news conference to respond to questions about the progress of their flight and the future of human space exploration posed by reporters all around the United States as well as those in Italy. 
And um, just, just to start off, and uh, Mike Barrett points this out, is that uh, this space station here now is the largest pressurized volume in space in history. It's, it's huge. I mean, I, I use a word my son uses all the time, which is ginormous. Um, we have 12 people up here now, and honestly, if we spread ourselves out, you could spread across this vehicle and you know, not see another person. It's, it's that big. I think volume-wise, equivalent to the interior of a 747 or a little bit bigger. And um, it's just really, really impressive to know that as a volume and a total um, volume workspace, we can use every single one of the walls and every single one of these modules in a way that um, we just can't do on the ground. And so it makes for a really wonderful resource for science and living and, um, and just being up here floating around, it's great.